everyone, and welcome back to our wall-to-wall -wall coverage of AWS reInvent. We are live from the show floor here in fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada. My name is Savannah Peterson, here with my co-host John Furrier on theCUBE. John, end of day three, you're smiling, yeah. you're still radiating energy. Is it, is it the community that's keeping your, no, your level up? It's just all the action. We've got a great special guest joining us for the first time on theCUBE, it's going to be great. And serverless wave is hitting more and more serverless embedded into the, like, things like analytics. I'm going to make things tightly integrated. You're going to see a lot more kind of tightly coupled, but yet still cohesive elements together being kind of end to end. And again, the, the zero ELT vision is soon to be here. That and security, major news here at Amazon. Of course, this next segment is going to be awesome about the modernization journey. We're going to hear a lot about that. Yeah, we are. And our next guest is also an extraordinarily adventurous one. Please welcome Joe from Arc XP. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks How's for having me. How's the show me. going for you? It's been great. And you know, it's the end of the day, but there's so much great energy at the show this there year. Really is. It's great walking the halls, seeing the great engineers, the thought leaders, including the session. So it's been really a, a stimulating time. What do you do at Arc? What do you got, what's your role? So I'm Vice President of Technology and Product Development. I recently joined Arc to lead all the product development teams. Uh, we have an experience platform. So in that platform, we have content tools, we have delivery tools, we have subscription tools. And it's a really exciting time in all those spaces. And your customer base is? Our customer base started with publishers. So Arc XP was built for the Washington Post internal needs many years ago. And word got out about how great it was built on top of the AWS tech stack. And other publishers came and started licensing the software. We've moved from there to B2C commerce as well as enterprise scenarios. I think that's really interesting, and I, I want to touch on your background a little bit here. You just mentioned the Washington Post. You have a background in broadcast. What was it, since you, since you are fresh, what was it that attracted you to ARC? What made you say yes? Yeah, so I spent a little under 10 years building the Associated Press broadcast newsroom tools, some of them that you have used for many years. <laughs> and you know, one of the things that was really exciting about joining ARC was they were cloud native, and they were cloud native from the start. And so that really gave them a leg up with how quickly they could innovate, and now we see developers here at reInvent be able to do custom lambdas and new extensibility points in a way that really no one else can do in the CMS space. Which, which is very exciting. Let's talk a little bit about your team and the development cycle. We, we've touched a lot on the economic uncertainty right now. How are things internally? What's the culture pulse? Yeah, so the return to work has been a, been a thing for us. Are you back like in office? All of them. We actually have a globally distributed team, and so if you happen to be lucky enough to be in Washington DC or Chicago or some of our other centers, there's an opportunity to be in the office, but most of our engineers work remotely. Uh, one of the exciting things we did earlier this year was Arc Week, where we brought everyone to DC to see each other face to face. And that same energy you see at reInvent was there in person with our engineers. I believe that. So I, 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 I'm a marketer by trade. I love that you're all about the digital experience. Well, are you creating digital, I mean, everyone needs some sort of digital experience. Yes. Every company is a technology company now. Do you work across verticals? Do you see more niche or industry specific? Yeah, so we began uh, with a very large vertical of media and, and broadcast. There's a couple and companies and in that couple, category. a couple of big ones yeah, out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And actually their challenges are really high volume production of great digital storytelling. And so solving their problems has enabled us to have a platform that works for anyone that needs to tell a story digitally, whether it's a commerce site, a corporate PR everyone, department, right? really everyone needs yeah. to get their story out today. Yeah. And so um, we have gone to a bunch of other verticals and we've seen the benefits of having that strong cloud-based platform offer uh, the scale that all storytellers need. Love what are that. some of the challenges today that, are, that weren't there a decade ago or even five years ago we see a lot of media companies looking at the business model innovations, changing landscapes, omni-channel distribution, different formats. What's some of the challenges that's going on in, in content? So, um, you know, content challenges include both production of content and delivery of that content through a great experience. So different parts of Arc focuses on, focus on those problems, and you got to monetize it as well. But what I'd say um, is unique to Arc and the challenge we talk to our customers about a lot is multi-format production. So it's not just about one channel, it's right. about telling a story and having it go across multi-channels, multi-sites. And having the infrastructure both technically and in the workflow tools is super critical for our customers and it is a challenge that, that we receive well. A lot of AI is coming into the conversation here, data, 
AI, publishing, video, user-generated content, all, it's all data. Yeah. It's all data. It's an immense amount of data. How do you look at the data plane or the data layer, the data aspect of the platform, uh, and what are some of the customers leaning into or, or kicking the tires around? Sure. What, are, what are some of the trends and, and what are some of the core issues you see? Yeah, so I've spent a lot of time in data ML and analytics looking at giant data sets. And you know, when you look at CMS systems and experience platforms, the first class citizen is really the, the documents themselves. What, what is the story you're saying? But where the rich data is that we can analyze is user behaviors, global distribution of content, how we optimize our CDN, and really give a personal experience to the reader. But beyond that, we see a lot of advantages in our digital asset management platform, which is for video, audio, photos, all kinds of media formats, and applying AI ML to do detection, suggest photos that might be appropriate based on what a journalist or a marketer is writing in their story. So there's a lot of opportunities around that sort of data. What are some of the business model changes that you're seeing? Because remember, we're in digital, page view advertising, has gone down, um, subscription firewalls on, on blogs, you got things like Substack emerging, journalists are kind of like changing. Um, I've seen companies go out of business, some of the media companies, or change, some of the smaller ones go out of business, the bigger ones are evolving. What are some of the business model enablements that you guys see coming that a platform could deliver so that a company can value their content and, the, and their talent? For sure, I mean this is a perennial question in the media space, right? It's been going on for two decades at least. I was going to say, we're, right? yeah, we're OG and media so folks. And so we've seen that play out. Yeah. Little yeah. softball Really for, for you. almost <laughs> every format. It's a softball. It's yeah. day three. It's you know, you know, how are we addressing that? You know, first and foremost, you got to do great storytelling. So we have tools for that, but then presenting that story in a great experience, no matter what device you're on, that's going to be critical no matter how you're monetizing it. And so, you know, we have customers that go very ad heavy. We also have a subscription platform that can do that built into our 15 infrastructure. 15 million plus registered users, correct? Yeah, yeah it's, it's unbelievable the scale. Really, ARC is a growth story. And so we went from serving the Washington Post needs to over 2,000 sites today across 25 countries. Very How do we get to that? How do we get that audience if we wanted to? Can we join that network? Is it a network of people? <laughs> of uh, people that are using ARC XP? Yeah. Actually, we recently launched a, a new effort around our community, so I think they actually had a meeting yesterday, <laughs> and so that's one way to get involved. But as you said, everyone needs to have a site and tell great stories. Yeah. So we see a wide appeal for our platform, and what's unique about Arc is it's truly a SaaS model. This is delivered via SaaS, where we take care of all of the services, over 100 Amazon services behind the scenes, wow. built into Arc. We manage all of that for our customers, including the CDN. So it's not as though as our customers have to be making sure the site is up. We've got teams to take care of that 24-7. Great value proposition and a lot yeah. of need for this. People doing their own media systems themselves. What's the secret sauce to your success if you had to kind of look at the technology? Obviously serverless is a big part of it on the AWS stack. What's the, what's the secret sauce? I think the secret sauce comes from the roots that ARC has in the Washington Post and you some of the most challenging it. content production um, workflows anywhere in the world. And I've spent a lot of time in many newsrooms. So I think that knowledge, the urgency of what it takes to get a story out, the, tol the zero tolerance for the site going down, that DNA really enables our engineers yeah. to do great solutions. They, Talk about understanding your user. Yeah. I mean, that, that's, uh, and, and drinking the Kool-Aid, but in, in a totally amazing way. One of the other things that stuck out to me in doing my research is not only are you a service used now by 50 million subscribers, but beyond that, you pride yourself on being a turnkey solution. Folks can get Arc up and running quite quickly, correct? For sure. So one of the things we built into Arc XP is something called Themes, which has a bunch of pre-built blocks that our customers don't have to end up with a custom code base when they've developed a new experience platform. Um, that, that's not a, a good solution to have every site be a custom code base. We're a product with extensibility hooks. Right. That really enable someone to get started very quickly. And that also includes bringing in content uh, from other platforms into Arc itself. So that journey of migrating a site is really smooth with our tool set. What's the history of the company? Is it, did it come from the Washington Post or was that the original customer? What's the DNA of the firm? Yeah, so it was originally built by the Washington Post for the Washington Post. So designed by digital storytellers mm -hmm. for storytelling. And so one of the largest DNA media outlets out there. Yeah, yeah. yeah so that's where that connection is. That Got really it. is where it comes through. Awesome, Now today, you know, those roots are still apparent, 
but we've been very responsive to other needs in the markets. Around commerce, there's a whole other set of DNA we've brought in, experts in understanding uh, different awesome. systems for inventory management, so we can do a great experience on top of some of those legacy platforms. My, my final question before we go to, this, to our little to the challenge, challenge is what's next? What's on the roadmap? Uh, as you look at the technology and the teams that you're managing, what's some of the next milestone or some priorities for your business? So it is really about growth, and that's the story of ArcXP, which has driven our technology decisions. So our choice to go serverless was driven by growth and needing to make sure we had an exceptional experience, but most importantly, that our engineers can be focused on product development and responding to what the market needed. So that's what I'd say next year is about. It's enabling our engineers to keep up with the scaling business, but still provide great value on the roadmap. And it's not like there's ever going to be a shortage of content or stories that need to be told, so sure. I suspect there's a lot of resilience in, in what you're And we hope to be inspired with new ways of telling stories. So if yeah. you go to the Washington Post or other media or outlets. Or the Cube. I know, I'm, I'm sure your brain is doing what my brain is doing today. dev like, meeting, uh, let's chat after for sure. Exactly, that's what I've been thinking the whole time. I'm sure <laughs> the wheels are turning over on this side Yo, of the Great team. to have you on. In a, in a lot of different ways. So we have a new tradition here at reInvent where we are providing you with an opportunity for quite a sizzle reel, Instagram video, 30 second thought leadership sound bite. What is your hot take, key theme, or most important thing that you're thinking about since we're here at this year's show? I would say it's the energy that's building in the industry, getting back together, the collaboration, and how that's resulting in us using new technologies. You know, the conversation is no longer about shifting to the cloud, we all have huge infrastructure. The conversation's about observability. How do we know what's going in? How do we make sure we're getting the most value for our customers with those, that technology set? So I think the energy around that is super exciting. I've always loved building products, so next year I think it's going to be a great year with that, putting together these new technologies. I think you nailed it. The nailed energy it. really is the story and, and, and the collaboration. Joe, thank you so much for being here and sharing your story. Ark is lucky to have you. And, uh, uh, we'll close with one, one personal anecdote. Favorite place to sail? Favorite place to sail. So I lived in the Caribbean for many years. Um, as we None of us are jealous up here at all. Um, and so my favorite place to sail would be in the British Virgin Islands, which was closed during COVID, but is now back open. So if any of you've had a chance to go to the BVI, make some time, hop on a catamaran, there's some great spots. All well, right. I think you just gave us a catalyst for our next vacation, maybe a team off Bucket list item? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, let's bring everyone together. Yeah, here we go, I love it. Yeah. Well, Joe, thanks so much again for being on the show. We hope to have you back on theCUBE again sometime soon. And thank all of you for tuning in to this scintillating coverage that we have here live from the AWS reInvent show floor in Las Vegas, Nevada with John Furrier. I'm Savannah Peterson. This is theCUBE, the leader in high-tech coverage.